Some companies use price discrimination in order to maximize their profit. So how does price discrimination works? They charge different prices to different groups of customers. And these prices are not related to the cost of production. So some examples will be in airlines. You discover that we have different prices based on economy or business and based on age as well. And the same with education. So what are the major requirements for successful price discrimination? We have three conditions. The first one, you must have some market power, which means you act as a monopoly, which means for monopoly, you generate already an economic profit, which is prices bigger than average total cost. The second factor is you need to be able to differentiate your customers based on their elasticity, which means you will separate them into two different groups. One group is elastic, the other one is inelastic. The third factor is you need to prevent any member from one group to move to the other group. If you have these three, three factors, you could easily apply price discrimination. But let's assume that if you exist in perfect competition or monopolistic competition, can you apply price discrimination? No, you don't have market power. So we have three types of price discrimination. The first one is first degree price discrimination. What we can call it is personalized pricing, which means we will charge individuals the maximum amount they are willing to pay for each unit of the product or service. An example of this one is what? Insurance. Each person is willing to pay different insurance premium. So I will have the insurance representative and they will discuss with them what is the maximum they are willing to pay for what additional services or features. Another example is bank loans. Individuals would like to get different loan amounts with different maturities. Consequently, they are going to tailor the loan characteristics based on their maximum ability to pay. Another example is internet service based on the speed and how many laptops could be connected together and all that stuff. The second degree of price discrimination, which means we give discounts for large quantity purchased. So we will charge different prices for different blocks of output. An example of this one is bulk purchasing. So anytime you purchase a larger quantity, they will give you a higher discount. The third degree of price discrimination. So it's based on elasticity. So is for inelastic, what is the relationship between price and total revenue? It's positive relationship. If price go up, total revenue will go up. If price go down, total revenue will go down. Therefore, if your customers are inelastic, it's better to increase price or decrease price. Increase price in order to increase total revenue. You have another group of customers, which is elastic. What is the relationship between price and total revenue for elastic individuals? It's a negative relationship. If price go up, total revenue will go down. If price go down, total revenue will go up. My target is to maximize total revenue. Therefore, what shall I do? Decrease the price. Therefore, for third degree price discrimination, we're going to separate the markets based on elasticity. So we will have two groups, elastic and inelastic. We will charge higher prices for the inelastic and lower prices for inelastic. An example of this one is airlines. You'll discover that we have economy class and business class. Another example is movies. You'll discover that the majority of people they work on the morning and that's why they will say that for any person below 18 that will come before 2 o'clock, they will pay half the price. So this is an example of third degree price discrimination. Another example is public transport. You will discover that for pensioners and for young people, they pay lower prices. Also, you will discover that during rush hour, for example, from eight to 10, so the transport authority will say that if you travel before eight or after 10, you will pay a lower price for transportation. But if you travel within this rush hour, you will pay the full price. So this is an example of third degree price discrimination. And also you can apply it for restaurants. You discover that since the majority of people are working in the morning, so it says that, okay, for pensioners who come before 6 p.m., they're going to pay a lower price.